Hi everybody, Rusty with you once again for Motorsport Australia. During these COVID times, we've been having catch-ups with all sorts of people across a raft of different disciplines. Those of you that are into the Australian Rally Championship may have noticed that Adrian Coppin has been catching up with some constituents there. Today, we'd like to focus on the BF Goodrich Australian Off-Road Championship. And to do that, we're going to talk with a bit of a legend of the game, the 2019 champion. I can't remember how many he's chalked up now. I think it's something like eight titles, but it's a delight to talk to him. Mark Burrows, g'day. How are we going today? Yes, uh, yeah, we're all sitting back waiting for something to happen in racing world. So, uh, yes, we've been lucky enough to, to get the eight. So, uh, all good so far. How have you been spending your time during uh, what, what's been uh, lockdown and an extended period away from active competition, which I know you love? Yes, well, it's been pretty tough. Like we had the car we prepped up till Christmas, getting ready for the championship this year, and then uh, Queensland got knocked on the head, and then every race since, all the national rant, well, all races in Victoria pretty well. So, uh, yes, it's given us a bit of time to look at things and uh, you know, do a bit of testing with the car. We've done a lot of testing and tweak a few things. And then we thought, well, we might as well go ahead and start getting a new car ready. So we've started organising parts for that too. That's good. Let's talk a little bit more about that because obviously it's a very family orientated game. The boys have more than a little bit of interest in uh, off-road competition. So tell us about that new car and what your likely plans, uh, I guess, for you know what's left of 2020 and into 2021 are going to be. Yeah, so it, it doesn't look like we're going to be doing much 2020, so maybe one at the end of the year, we're hoping, uh, if they can get that up and running, depending on how the COVID turns out. But uh, as far as the car goes, uh, the, the one we've been running is ready to go uh, with, with a lot of changes, so which we're yeah, really happy with how it's progressed. And uh, Matthew's been doing a lot of drive, navigated last year. Uh, he's been doing a lot of driving and testing on our farm here at Burren Beat in Victoria. So, uh, and also we, we've been thinking of building a new car for a while, but it's given us the chance to, to really have a bit of good hard think about it, organise some parts and stuff. And uh, we hope to have another new car running by the end, to mid to end of next year, we think. Your rivals will be watching. Uh, can you give us a little window into uh, the kinds of changes you may have made and where you feel like the vehicle's been better? Mainly suspension. Um, we've been, we, we set up a bit of a track and maybe copied a, you know, or tried to replicate the Fink Whoops, which uh, where it's won and lost in Alice Springs. So uh, we've done because we've got Earth Moving Gear too, so that's a bit of luck. So... Uh, we took that down the paddock and replicated that, made some whoops and a you know, bit of that stuff and then did a bit, a lot of suspension work with Matthew driving and I was out the side uh, watching and adjusting and, and uh, we, we've got a lot out of it. So uh, the car's going really good. We've had uh, our engine builder, Stewie Knowles, he's been doing a bit with the engine and stuff and tweaked that a little bit and smoothed around it. So it's, it's all uh, a really good package now. So we're, we're really happy. I know how much you thrive on the competition and how much you've enjoyed it over the years. But as the boys progress here, does that mean you'll start to perhaps take a, a bit more of a, of a back seat where you continue to drive? What are your plans in that regard? Yeah, so, so I'm uh, going to keep driving for a while i'll have my youngest boy tom he'll be navigating for me and uh maybe, maybe for a few years yeah so so and then when he's at the age where he can move in well you know i probably will step away and just stay in the pits uh and look after him from from there but uh Matt, matthew will start driving like towards the end of next year and um yeah so i'm really looking forward to it it's uh like you say it is a real family thing and Quite a few families in off-road racing, you know, are involved in it, and it's when when your kids come along and get involved in it, it uh, just makes you even more interested. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Off-road's been my life. I started racing when I was 16, so uh, so yeah, I've been involved in it ever since. Just expand on that for people that perhaps compete in other disciplines for Motorsport Australia. How did you get into it? What was the thing that that sparked the love for it? really started with like one of our friends who just lived up the road had a car he was one of the first ones in off-road racing i guess and uh he had a sand pit up the road which we used to cart out of and he had the buggy there and uh he wanted to take my father for a ride in it um and he, he refused so i hopped in and uh, from that day i was hooked so uh so and that's i think i was only 14 or 15 then so uh so i, I kept my eye on things and watched other people and then uh we, we ended up building an, a car, me and one of my mates, where he was 18, and we built a, just an old buggy and uh, 
our first race ever was, I think it was 1976 at the uh, Hatter, Hatter Desert Race. So, uh, yeah, so, and we finished too. <laughs> there were 707 entries and uh, counting bikes. And, uh, yeah, we finished that way, way back, but we had an absolute blast. So I've well, pretty well raced since then. Is it the camaraderie? Is it the machine? Is it the great outdoors? What is it that, that you fell in love with about it so much? Um, I think it's all of that. And most of the people involved in it, especially in the early days, you built the car, you raced the car, you, you, know, you did everything. You know, everything you did yourself. And it wasn't all that expensive, you know. So it's changed a lot now, but you still put a lot of input yourself in, or you can if you want to. And, uh, yeah, you can build your car and you can race it. And if you win a championship, it's it's just fantastic. So, uh, yeah, it's still a sport, a motorsport that, anyone can get into because there's so many levels of cost and classes and stuff like that so great sport and ev- everyone's there to help everyone it doesn't matter who's broken down the bloke pitting beside you will throw parts at you to get you going so uh that's that's fantastic that leads me to how the community's kind of stayed in touch with this period who have you uh, caught up with perhaps and and you know how's the community the, the off-road community kind of kept it together uh yeah we we there's phone calls yeah everyone's talking to everyone and everyone's keen oh can we get you know will we be allowed to go here will we be allowed to go there and they've been doing a bit of racing in south australia and queensland and um well we're in victoria so we've sort of haven't been able to go anywhere but kept in contact with you know, i was talked to shan wrench only a couple of days ago and his new car's nearly up and running i don't know whether he wants me to tell him about that <laughs> <laughs> breaking breaking news <laughs> like that but yeah no everyone knows he, he's got a new car uh, on the go which is very interesting so about another american built car so he's um yeah, he's just about ready to go and um i know that danny and andy brown uh they've got two new cars so Hayden Bentley, he's got a new car. He's got an um, all-wheel drive trophy truck, so that'll be very interesting. He'll be a, uh, he'll be a one to, to keep your eye on, I would should imagine. So we're looking forward to get all these cars together. Yeah, we sure are. To come back to your projects, does that mean that you uh, and Matt will go head-to-head or will you be in different classes with the new one you're, you're talking about? Yeah, so no, it'll be different classes. So uh, we'll be running the same engine, but without turbochargers. So it'll be normally aspirated, three and a half litre class, which is pro light. Matthew will be in, and then I'll stay in pro uh, pro class just so I can beat him. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like? I mean, because he's obviously progressed and and has you know been with you, um, you know, through some of the achievements as well. It's great for the father son relationship. Clearly, but he's obviously at a point where he wants to to take it next level now. He is, yes. So he's um, he's or just just about to turn nineteen pretty soon, actually. So so he's been he's been in the car a lot, you know, so since he's you know probably since he was sixteen or so. He's been out you know in the paddock and stuff like that. So he's done a fair bit of driving, a lot of navigating, and because he's been involved in the sport, so he's talks to Shannon and Hayden and everyone. He's with them all the time and their kids and and they just get that wound up in it. They know every car and every time and where everyone is at a race. So, uh, yeah, they know what's going on. Like, they're, they're pretty switched on with all that. They know the terrain. They usually come pre-running with us before the event, so they know oh, a lot fantastic. of the tracks too. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, young enthusiasm is... Uh, it's got a lot to be said to it. You know? like yeah. he, he'll uh, he'll certainly be far through. Younger fellows are a, a bit more aggressive, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it'll, uh, it'll be very interesting how he goes. Can we reminisce for a, a little moment, Mark, if we can, about 2019, what that meant to you and, and where in the scheme of the success that you've enjoyed over the years that particular one fits? Yeah, oh, for sure. Like, last year, you, you would never dream about, you know, when I first started racing, you would never have dreamed about winning a championship, let alone winning one with your son as your navigator. So, uh, and he was able to get enough points to win the navigator side of a championship as well. So... Like it, it, it was by far the best one. Like the the look and the the feel, and when we got out of the car, you know, after that event, and knowing that we'd won the championship, I could never explain it. Like it was just fantastic. So, uh, it, uh, you know, I, I'm hoping we can win one with Tom, but it's it's a long way. You know, a lot of water to go under the bridge, and you need a lot of luck on your side, and all that sort of thing. But I'm just glad to get that one with Matthew and. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, he he was stoked. Like he was just so excited as as I was too. So congratulations! I'm glad it means so much to you. I, the jewel in the crown 
uh, for many competitors, Mark, and I'm sure you're this, the same, of course, is Fink. Very sadly, we couldn't go to um, Apertura this year and to, to Central Australia. We love going there. Hopefully, with fingers crossed and things, um, you know, we can get back there for, for 2021 because it is just such an amazing event and to think sadly that we missed it this year has been a, a, a bitter pill hasn't it to swallow yeah it certainly has yeah like who would have ever thought you would if when we were racing there last year if someone said oh, i think we're beyond next year you would have laughed at them you know exactly. so uh, it's such a huge event and huge for the northern territory huge for alice springs um and huge for us you know it's by far our biggest race and uh we we, we deal with americans a lot you're getting parts stuff like that and Fink or Fink Desert Race is the race they know. Like, it's their Baja 1000 with Fink Desert Race. So they've had people come over and run in it, and it's just a great event. So uh, we've been lucky enough. We've we've won it five times, and we were the first car to beat the motorbikes at Alice Spring or at Fink. So, uh, so yeah, it's been really good to us. And they treat me like a local. We've been there that many times. <laughs> they treat me like a local. I think we've had 21. I think we've had 21 starts in Alice Springs. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I love it up there. It's fantastic. What is it for you about the event? Is it just the the nature of the road, um, how taxing it is, and how flat out you have to go? Is it all of that? Is it the um, you know the the unique Australian landscape that you that you compete through. It certainly is like when you're coming into Alice Springs and you see that red sand and uh, it's a fan like in June it's just green and red sand and it's just fantastic. So uh, yeah, the the locals, the businesses, and that every one of them has the pink poster in his window. It's that they they're right behind it and because uh, well, they get massive entries and the motorbikes and the car thing i love love dirt bikes and uh and you know that part of it as well it's just a huge event huge the the little week leading up to think like it's just as busy as the race itself so uh you know it's it's a great great event and uh anyone that hasn't done it i would thoroughly recommend to go up and give it a go because it's it's uh, a good thing even in addition to that, go up and watch it. If you, even if you can't take part in it, um, go up and just just um, feel, see, uh, enjoy what it is all about. It's a very unique, world class um, event in itself. Hey, um, yes. before we wrap, before we wrap this up, um, obviously, uh, you know, there's been a bit of news emerge while you and I are talking. In fact, in relation to uh, off road cups for 2020 some competition in south australia and of course over in uh, kalgoorlie as well um is there anything immediately on the radar for you or is it more about prepping uh those cars and getting ready for what we hope will be a, an all-out crack at 2021 that's our main thing at the moment we'll get ready get for new, ready for next year but if they do get the uh the cups up and running and we can go we'll be there so uh you know, it all sounds very interesting. You know, the South Australia one is, you know, it could be possible for us. I'm not sure about the West Australia, depend on border, but if it's open, we'll be there. So uh, we're dying to get in these cars. And, and as is everyone, if, I, I think you'll have to enter early if you're going to do any race on the road <laughs> because once we're allowed to go, everyone will be there. So uh, they'll have, yes, certainly be no shortage of entries at, at any event at the moment. So... Uh, Yep, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to getting back in the car. Matthew is too. Matthew would love to have been involved in this, but he, he works away. He works down at Warnable, so uh, so he couldn't be here, but uh, but he's dying to get back in it. Please give uh, him and all the family um, our very best. It's been fabulous to sit and, and chat with you and, and reminisce a little bit. And I love the fact, Mark, that even though we've had this COVID period, you've lost nothing as far as the, the infectious passion for the, the game is concerned. I know you eagerly want to get back behind the wheel that's that's key but um if anything you're more you're more fired up than ever yep that's for sure yeah and and all the races and everyone involved in it keep the chins up we'll we'll be racing again soon so uh dying to get back out there well done mate that's a great sentiment to finish on so obviously there's lots of um things happening in relation to each state and what is possible as far as motorsport events are concerned. The best place to stay up to date on the facts that matter and the very latest, of course, is the Motorsport Australia website. So there it is. Head there for the latest info and we'll be back with another catch up real soon. Bye for now.